once a week, balancing a 60-hour work week job, I've decided to do the program five days a week, one hour a night, taking a significant pay cut. So I've started a Patreon page, which is Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N slash Sportscope, spelled the same way at the bottom of the screen you see there, for $5 a month, 17 cents a day. You can help support the program. You ask yourself, why Sportscope? Well, I bring in such big names uh, such as Al Borges, former Auburn offensive coordinator, and and I cover the big news uh, in sports that the corporate media will not cover. If you want to contribute more than $5 a month, you can go use the cash app. The cash tag is Sports Scope, again, spelled the same way, or you can go to the Zelle app, sportsscope at gmail.com. Uh, Sportscope has about 5,000 followers and growing. If you want to advertise on the program, you can email me. The word is sportsscope, spelled the same way again, at gmail.com. Thank you and enjoy the program. Now we're live here on all links, everybody. Welcome to Sportscope on this uh, 11th day of October. I know there was dramatic a dramatic ending to the uh, Seattle-Houston game there. I did not watch the playoffs, but I will ask, hopefully, Thursday. Now, I sent him an email early yesterday, uh, Monday, for the program. I'm going to ask Jack Hirsch. Uh, he, he seems to be really astute with the baseball. He's a New Yorker. Uh, I know that, um, oh, God, what is this manager's name here? Uh, ask him about Buck Showalter for the Mets. Is he the most overrated manager in the history of Major League Baseball? Uh, he's coached the Yankees. Now he's coached the Met manager, whatever, the Mets, and – they were, I want to say, in July, seven to eight games uh, lead in the NL East. They let that slip away. The Braves came back and won that division. And then they turn around and lose not only that division, they slide to a wild card, but then they lose two straight and get put out of the wild card round. With all that talent, with Scherzer and DeGrom, all that money they spent, in the offseason, got a new owner. Is Buck Showalter the, the most overrated coach in Major League Baseball history? Got always gets big jobs. And what I've seen of him, he barely delivers. He he does not deliver. He he is not uh and I'm not a huge baseball guy. I don't it's not really a baseball show, but it, it is the playoffs, and I want to ask him about that. So supposedly he'll be on Thursday. Now, tomorrow, Al Borges uh will be on the program. His book is in the mail. I should have his book tomorrow, uh, the, the the Night of the Tiger, the story of the 2004 Auburn Tigers that did not get a chance to win a national championship. Going to do a follow-up interview with him. May bring him back on a third time and ask him, because I haven't even got the book yet. The book just came out last week. There was the delay on the book. There is always delays on these, uh, not always, this year, there's a supply chain shortage. Uh, there's printing issues. Uh, Sid Rosenberg, I talked about him last week with WABC uh, the, with the Bernie and Sid show. Remember, his co-host Bernie died of um, pancreatic, uh, pancreas cancer, cancer of the pancreas last week. He was He's a big sports guy and worked for WFAM. He had a book about his father and his relationship that was supposed to come out on Father's Day back in June. It didn't get released until late August, actually. So there is some delays there. I was going to ask Al Borges, former Auburn coach, offensive coordinator, about that. his book. Uh, how How's his tour going? Uh, he also said on his Facebook, and I will bring that up, and I will put that as far as my crawl tomorrow, that if you want his book signed, uh, he left his address, or a address, excuse me, to send that to, to have that book, um, to have that book signed. 
and he will send it back to you. I'll ask him about that tomorrow. I'm going to ask him about all these quarterbacks here in the college game. Guys like Will Rogers. Will Rogers of Mississippi State's leading the league in passing yards. Uh, I just mentioned the fact yesterday that he led the league in most completions. Uh, they're getting on, washed under the rug, swept under the rug, because uh, I'm going to talk about Hendon Hooker and the University of Tennessee here in a little while. Also, um, Ryder's game is tricky. Too many Chiefs, not enough Braves. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Pickle says that, and plus it was just a printing issue. But also I'm going to ask uh, Al about all these quarterbacks. I'm going to ask him about Mich Michigan statistically is a pretty good football team. Uh I don't know if they're better in Tennessee. I'm going to ask him if he thinks they're better in Tennessee. From what he's seen, Tennessee's got three ranked wins, and they're sixth, and I'm going to say Michigan's fourth. Uh, now, after this week, a lot of those questions will be answered. If they beat Alabama, uh, they're going to jump ahead. They're, they're probably going to jump to two uh, behind Georgia. They will jump ahead of Ohio State. That's a big if. Uh, but also, this program... Now, I haven't got back to him. I ran into Rob Mack. Rob is a guy that works for Vanderbilt uh, Hospital. Ran into him this morning. He wants to come on the program and talk about this Tennessee team and what he thinks. Um, very, There's a lot of buzz going around here in Nashville about that team, about SEC football, uh, as good as the conference has been this year. Uh I'm going to ask him about that. Now, he hasn't got back to me. He, he did get off work early. He may have had something come up. Uh, if if he don't come on, I've got some material. I should be okay material-wise, but just kind of giving you that announcement later on. But first, Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell was – he. This, this is the coach of the Detroit Lions, Dan Campbell. And he is a guy that – Came in the league. Uh, he's been a uh, tight ends coach. Remember, I, we talked about this before. He's the head coach of the Detroit Lions, okay? Uh, he's been an assistant for years, going all the way back to the Miami days as a uh, an assistant there. He was an assistant and interim coach there when their head coach was fired. Uh, the team played really well for about two games. They totally ran out of gas. He was the interim there. And long story short, he didn't get the head coaching job there. Uh, I think Adam Gase ended up getting that job. Of course, Gase was fired as well. He goes on to the Saints and and uh, because stays with the tight end coach job there. And this, uh, not last year, but 2021 season, uh, not this past year, but the 2021 season, Dan Campbell was hired as the head coach of Detroit. And this year, they were on hard knocks. Now, follow you remember he talks about biting kneecaps and all that stuff when he gets hired as the head coach. I told him, I wrote him off and said that was a straight uh, uh, idiotic type of thing to say as you're a head coach in the NFL. The NFL is more uh, buttoned up than that. This is not wrestling or anything like that. Uh, this is definitely not even college football. It's NFL. It's very serious. Uh, it's it's a multi-billion dollar business, and it's the most watched TV show in America, technically, right? But but you hear reports, uh, well, you see how well they played last year, considering their lack of talent. Uh, they had some big upsets. It beat teams like Arizona last year. It was a playoff team, and they should have beat a Baltimore last year. I talked about yesterday about uh, Justin Tucker kicking a 60-yard field goal yesterday. Uh, and he picked one to, to, to beat Detroit. But this past year, during the offseason, they get Aiden Hutchison in the draft, a guy from Michigan uh, who played really well. Michigan got into the playoff there. Uh, really good defense. Uh, got him with the number two overall pick. They've got Jeff uh, Okuda back, uh, the former number four overall pick, I want to say, from Ohio State. So, and then you have hard knocks there. You see that he's bringing a lot of ex-players, guys like Aaron Glenn, defensive coordinator, guys like, um, oh, God, I can't remember the guy's name now. We had former Pittsburgh Steelers receiver on the team. Mark Brunel is the uh, quarterback coach there. Uh, pretty good offensive coordinator. Uh, 
they have a top five offensive line pro football focus coming into the uh, season. Uh, they get off to a really good start, run the ball really well. But their defense, check this out. The problem is their defense is 31st in total yards. They're 32nd points that dead last in the league. And they have the worst all around. They're 26th against the pass. They're the worst all around defense in the league. And they were recently blown out 29 to nothing against New England. Now, you could say, well, Belichick's the greatest coach. Yes. And Belichick has had two cornerbacks. One of them, uh, I want to say his name's like John Jones or something. He has the highest, highest rated, excuse me, folks, uh, pro football focus grade in the NFL. And. They, but they get shut out. They get shut out. They have Jared Goff. They got that top offensive line. Uh, New England does not have a good, really good pass rush. And they get beat 29 to nothing on the road. And the question will be, uh, Dan Campbell, being a likable players coach, a guy that everybody seems to like, will he have the heart to make changes? like a David Culley was uh, asked to do for the Houston Texans last year. Uh, that was the former of uh, uh, this guy was a special teams coach for years. He was in his sixties, David Culley. Uh, the Texans asked him to fire some coaches and he, he wouldn't do it. And this guy is, is so close to the players and the coaches who are former players. Most of them in the NFL, um, you got to wonder if he's got the heart to do that, you know. And you, you, you wonder if he's got the heart. Or is he going to be a guy that comes off as a very likable coach, really good for the NFL? Is he going to be that guy that gets fired simply because he wouldn't make changes or, or he wouldn't make the proper in-season adjustments? Now, of course, we're just five games into the season. But it's a storyline to think about. Um, they've got Jared Goff. They have another dilemma. Uh, Goff's playing pretty well. 11 touchdowns. None None Sunday. None Sunday. Uh, 11 touchdowns, four interceptions. But he was shut out. You know, he was shut out. And, and uh, Pickle says that he is a... Um, that DeAndre Swift, their leading running back, and Amon St. Brown was out, yes, but they, they still have that offensive line in tech uh and in intact there, and they should have been able to score some points there. Now, of course, me in fantasy, I, I had a Patriot defense on fantasy, and they play great. And the odds makers, I want to say the Patriots were like two and a half, three point favorites. Uh, there was a lot of respect for Detroit by the odds makers coming into that game. They had a horrible game, and they've been giving up a lot of points this year uh, to everybody. I mean, they they are horrible defensively, you know. But you you got to wonder about situations like that. Now he was brought in because when when a team makes a change, they usually bring in the opposite. They usually bring in the opposite of the other coach, right? Um, Matt Patricia was not a player's coach. He was not a likable guy. He was not good with the media. He was a bad communicator. And he was a typical Bill Belichick assistant protege over the past 20 years. Uh, he tried to be Bella, Bill Belichick without Bill Belichick's resume. The players didn't buy into it. Uh, neither did anybody else. And, of course, he was fired. Matt Patricia was fired. And this guy's the total opposite of that. Now, you could say, well, they play hard for him. Well, you get that the first year. And then the second year, you got to start actually winning games. And then you've got to start building something on from there. Uh, my guess is that they'll probably get it right. They'll probably get this thing right. And... Uh, They'll make some adjustments. Uh, what I would recommend throughout free agency, the draft, the fact that other players like playing for this guy, even the players that were cut, really, really – and I've watched Hard Knocks for years. I've watched it for years. And uh, the, the players that 
that that were being cut. They they hugged uh, uh, Campbell and really thanked him. So that word is going to get around the league and get back to other notable free agents coming up in 2023. And my guess is this team will probably get a top five pick again. Some mock drafts have them drafting another quarterback because if they if they cut if they cut uh, Jared Goff, they'll save twenty million dollars in cap hit. He's a thirty million dollar cap hit guy next year. Uh, I still like the trade that they did. Stafford didn't want to play there anymore. He was getting older in age, and they got some first round picks. And they got a player, okay? They come out pretty well in this trade, if you ask me. And there was an article. I want to say someone on Twitter put it out, and it was a Wall Street Journal article about the Rams when the win my win now mode, how that may not work out long term. Of course not. That was just the title of it. But I thought to myself, well, of course not, that may not work out. That's why it's called win now mold. It's not built for the future mold. I digress. But so you got to see improvement defensively, and this team has still got to upset some people. Now, is 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 flaky as this Packer team is playing in Detroit? They may beat the Packers this year. They may make some adjustments on, on offense, you know. They may make some adjustments on defense, uh, per se, and and maybe they they maybe they beat a bear team. Maybe they beat a Viking team. The Viking teams are slightly overrated. Green Bay is a team that is simply uh, not got quite enough chemistry with their uh, their skill players, who who are all practically brand new except Lazard and Tanyan. Uh, receiving core wise and they 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 underestimated the giants just like everybody has the giants have a pretty decent defense and they've got a pretty decent uh running game they've got one of the better running games but they they simply have been a team that is snuck up on people every week every single week and eventually that's going to come to a halt i think and they're going to go back to being the giants like i like i said i, pre- I predicted they'll they'll be about 8 and 9 well, we're halfway there. Maybe they'll be nine and eight, right? Okay. But as far as this uh, Detroit team is concerned, that's what I would do. I'll probably try to look and see what, and this is going to be a great quarterback draft, everything I'm seeing. Look at these guys in college. And, and, and a guy like Jared Goff. Does Jared Goff, can he take a pay cut? He is a guy that is not worth $30 million. Most of these quarterbacks in the NFL, I would say probably 25 are not worth franchise quarterback money. There's only so many that are worth that kind of money. Guys like Deshaun Watson, love him or hate him. Uh, His touchdown to interception ratio, quarterback uh, rating, uh, playoff, uh, how he plays in playoff, third down percentage. Guys like Deshaun Watson, Patrick Mahomes. Josh Allen, uh, uh, Tom Brady, and, of course, uh, Aaron Rodgers. Everybody else, they're just being overpaid. You know, they're simply overpaid players because high tide raises all boats. I just wish some of these teams would would realize that and say, you're not worth X, Y, and Z. We'll let somebody else pay you that, and we'll just be without a quarterback until we can find somebody in the draft. You know, if someone would just take that chance, I think that there, uh, someone would win a Super Bowl by paying a quarterback four or five million dollars, who's a veteran in this league, who's passed his rookie contract, four or five to seven million dollars, uh, passed his rookie contract, and win a Super Bowl. If they pull that off, if they pull that off. I think other teams will try. It's a copycat league, right, Pickles? It's a copycat league. You know, we're talking to uh, a guy at work, another guy at work today, about a guy like uh, um, Ron Tannehill, Kareem. The guy's name's Kareem. Not Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. This guy works in it. But I was talking to him today about a guy like Ron Tannehill. 
and how 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 good a season he's having statistically. He's having a really good season. Uh, the Titans beat Washington last week, and now they're leading in the division. Now you know since Jacksonville lost, uh, and, and their Colts win looks that much better, right? The Colts have beat uh, Denver. By the way, Denver's got the best secondary in football. I was looking at the stats today. They have the best secondary in football. They just have problems offensively and finished games, and a lot of that's coaching. A lot of that is lack of uh, reps with his new team, I think, out of out of Russell Wilson, you know. But it it is um, – but I think how much better – because he was thinking he, – he was saying, Kareem was, uh, what if they went out and got Jack Rabbit Jenkins, Junior Jenkins back? I said, well, yeah, that'd be good. Maybe they can need some more help at the cornerback position. He said, well – you know, uh, the reason why they got rid of him because he gave up that big play in the playoff game. And I said, yeah, of course. But a lot of this, they could have went out and got a lot more defensive players or another uh, veteran wide receiver. Maybe they could have got a Devontae Parker from a Miami if they weren't paying Ryan Tannehill $36 million. If they were paying him 7 or $8 million, and had 27 more million dollars, maybe they'll have Roger Saffold there, and they'd be able to run the football more. So this is something a team like Detroit's got to talk about. You know, a lot of these teams should. You know, there's so many t- teams that are overpaying these quarterbacks that are not worth what they're not franchise. I mean, as much as I like Lamar Jackson, his athleticism, commitment, he can't make the big throws to win the games in the playoffs and and and. He's not worth what they're going to pay him, $45 million a year. Dak Prescott's getting beat out by a guy named Cooper Rush. You know, Dak Prescott's going to be making $40 million next year. And his his stats mirror Cooper Rush's, guys. You know? But that's the dilemma of the Lions. That's the dilemma of a lot of the teams in the NFL. Most players are, you've just got to get around that. I know you've got unions and you've got agents and uh, and money contracts and, and teams are afraid to make these kind of moves because if they're without a quarterback, you're kind of like in limbo, like a Washington uh, uh, commander's team, right? And then, by the way, to, by, uh, today Ron Rivera says, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, he was apologizing for telling the truth that his quarterback is not playing well. Because he hasn't done it in, in next the last two teams he's played on. He, he holds on to the ball too long. He, he is second in the league. And the, his, his offensive lines aren't that bad. In sack quarterback, he is, uh, he's got six interceptions in five games, which means he averages over one a game. But he had to go back and apologize uh, to Carson Wentz, a guy who, who, who looks like the Prince there, Prince Harry, of uh, of um, uh, the UK there, or whatever, of uh, Great Britain, you know. <laughs> Bernie McGork, the late guy that died I was telling you about in the radio show, real, real funny guy. He says, uh, Hen Pecked Harry, the guy that was married to Meghan Markle. Because he, he, he is, a, he's Hen Pecked. He, he is, uh, he is, uh, Strung out on her. He's high strung, you know. And it is a complicated business, what Pickle says. Now, okay, so we talked about that. Now, let's get into the uh, Power Five this week. I want to see if my friend Robert, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he got caught up. He ain't gonna, might not be able to rob you. If he comes in, come on in here in the next few minutes. We'll talk about the college game. If not, I've got enough material. I think we're going to be okay. All right, so. Now, Power Five, last week at my top five was Kansas City, number one, Buffalo, number two, Philadelphia, number three, Green Bay, number four, and San Francisco, number five. Now, that has changed itself for San Francisco. Uh, The 49ers, by the way, let me me go back over this. this. This defense of the Niners is really good. In an offensively driven league, this defense of the Niners, uh, CBS put this out today. Uh, in points allowed, ranked first. 
in yards per play ranked first. Uh, yards per game ranked first. Rushing yards uh, per game ranked first. Passing touchdowns per game ranked first. Sacks ranked first. First downs per game ranked first. They got the best defense in the league. 49ers, they're fifth. And plus they're moving the ball. You know, they're about 15th to 18th in running, but they're still the most one of the most physical teams in the league. They put 37, I want to say, last week or Sunday on Carolina, who fired their coach afterwards, caused David Tepper to fire the coach. So I've got 49ers fifth, and Trent Williams will be back at some point. He'll be back in the next – they're 2-0 and without him. But he'll be back in the next three to four weeks. He's got a high ankle sprain. And they're moving the ball without him. And and the Rams lost. And Arizona lost. So they're And, and Seattle lost. So I, I want to say they're in first place now in the West. Because everybody's 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, they're 3-2. and two. They're in first place. They were my preseason Super Bowl team. Uh even with the Trey Lance situation. So I've got them still remaining at fifth, okay? Okay, a lot of people's not going to like this. But Bernard McGuirk, yeah, that, that's his name, Pickles. The 49ers playing, playing Baker Mayfield. Yeah. and But they played, the, you know, they, they played Bradford last week. You know, uh, if it wasn't for that other player there, uh they, they still have a really good defense. Fred Warner. Now, they've had some injuries. I want to say they had a cornerback get hurt, Emmanuel Mosley. So, they didn't come out there unscathed. They may fall out because of their injuries on defense. I think Mosley's out for the year, but they still got Tredavious Ward. But they got Jimmy Ward back at safety, really good safety. So, I got them at fifth. We'll see how it goes. There are no great teams in the NFC. There are no great teams. Philadelphia is good. They're not great. Here's number four, uh, Dallas. Dallas, seventh in total defense, third in points allowed. Uh, They are second in turnovers caused. Uh, So they cause their second lead in causing the most turnovers here. Uh, Michael Parsons, uh, they're second in sacks. Michael Parsons playing at an all-pro level. Uh, He's playing like a defensive player of the year kind of guy. They scored on defense last week. Uh, they strip sack fumble. They they allow. Think about this. Think how good Buffalo is, and they they allowed eleven points to the Rams last week at home at the Rams on the road there. And you you look at their running game. Uh, they are they are four and zero with uh, their he's what is he five and zero total now. With, with, with Cooper Rush there, uh, running the ball much better. I want to say they're uh, with a the 10th and running. And by the way, their penalties are way down from plant from last year. Remember the big issue was penalties last year? They, they are, they're one of the lowest penalized. Now, that could change, you know. But they're just playing better on both sides of the ball with um, – they're playing on on better on, on both sides of the ball with this Cooper Rush guy, you know. So I got them at number four. They could slide out, yeah. And and tackles for loss. Pickle says, yeah, they're hitting people behind the line of scrimmage. They look like they've got fourteen or fifteen players uh, there on defense. Dan Quinn is probably assistant coach of the year. Okay, they're playing at extremely high level. They gave up one really big play to Cooper Cup, and that was it. They dominated the Rams, okay? All right, number three, Kansas City. I would have put Kansas City a little higher, but they have this tendency, and this is twice, this is twice they have the the tendency, Kansas City, to mail in games, and that is coaching, and that is lack of concentration. This Kansas City team, uh, was down what twenty nothing yesterday, and we were talking. I want to say I know they were down fourteen nothing, and then they come back and win. They get four touchdowns out of Travis Kels, but they lost to the lowest scoring team in the league, the Colts. 
Now, and you've seen the way they play um, against a team like Tampa, where they look like world beaters. They play at such a higher level. So they're playing on emotion, and they're not playing with consistent football play, okay? Uh, They're just not bringing it week in and week out. When last week they had the number one rush uh, uh, off defense in the country, and I had the over and under for – uh, J- um, what's his name? Jacobs there. Josh Jacobs, the running back at 59. And he had over that before halftime. So they dropped all the way down to, to third and run defense now because that one game from first to third. But that being said, they still got Josh uh, Patrick Mahomes. They were probably looking ahead to Buffalo this week. They're playing the Raiders. The Raiders are bad. I'll talk about that Devontae Adams thing here in a minute. And they, uh, the Raiders' defense is subpar at best. At best, they're subpar. They have a tendency to blow leads. That's the second lead that the Raiders have blown. But Kansas City, hey, that's two out of the last three games. You did not play up to your potential in uh, in the first half there. So I got them down at four. Once they get now, mind you, let's let's go back to the Kansas City Chiefs. I want to say that they've been in four consecutive AFC Championship games. They got the two Super Bowls. They got put out last year, and uh, was it four years ago? Remember the Patriots put them out in a wild shootout. That was Tom Brady's last year, I want to say, or a few years back with, um, who was it, Uh, with with, with, uh, the Patriots there when they beat the Rams that year. So they've been to four or five consecutive AFC Championship games, two Super Bowls. And... It's hard to keep a team that's that successful up week in and week out. That's why I still got them in the – and plus they did win. They did win yesterday. It helps when you – they're still just 4-1. and one. They should be 5-0. and oh. They could be 3-2. and two. They could be, but they didn't, but they're not. Okay? So, number two, this team's undefeated, guys. They're undefeated. They went across the country. They got a win there. Uh, I predicted, I said it's going to be about a three-point game. Uh, they do not phase when they get down in games, and that's the Eagles. Now, that is as of this week. I'm leaning to- towards – now, they play Cal- the Dallas, and this is actually a big game. This is not ratings hype. This is not uh, ESPN or NBC or one of these big networks trying to push a big game. This is a big game coming up this week. The Eagles at home against Dallas. It's going to be height and emotion galore going on up there, right? This is going to be a big game. Um, But I've got the Eagles at number two right now. Uh, They're second in points differential. What does that mean? That they're second in the league by margin of victory over opponent. That's pretty good. They are second or they're eighth in defense, fifth in pass rush, tenth in run defense. They're fourth in rushing offense. You know, I, I want to say they're they're close to the top in total yards, top five total yards. Uh, they're moving the ball all over the place, and they're undefeated. They're undefeated. But but number one, Buffalo's point differential. Is nine, it's 47. By the way, Philadelphia was 47 in point differential. How what's their average margin? Uh, how are they beating their opponents? And that tells you how much better Buffalo is when they're really on, like they were Sunday. Buffalo was first in point differential at 91 points. They didn't beat Pittsburgh, they blew them out of the water because Pittsburgh beat them last year and they didn't have JJ Watt. Buffalo, uh, 41 points. Uh, They're first in offense in total yards. They're second in total points in defense. They're first in points allowed. 
second in yards. They're clearly the best team. They're number one or number two in both offense and defense. I mean, they're the best team in football. What, uh, what's the argument? Uh, they're running the ball, their lack of running with the running back. You're going to need that when the weather changes. You don't want to keep putting that on Josh Allen. But other than that, uh, their pass rush, their secondary, they're going to, there's a chance, there's a chance they might get Tredavious White back this week. They may get uh, Tredavious White, their lead cornerback this week, and they still got uh, Poyer back at safety. Looks like he's going to, he could possibly be back this week. Von Miller, we talk about that pass rush every week there. Ross Anu, uh, they just, the pass rushers for that, Traymon uh, Edmonds, I want to say, that is their, um, that is their linebacker there. Let's see if this guy got back to me. Looks like Robert's not going to be making it. And we're just going to keep on keeping on because it looks like I've got plenty of information to talk about. So Buffalo is by far the best team, I think. I really do. And so Buffalo's number one, Philly number two, Kansas City number three. But would I take Kansas City against Philadelphia? Yes. Because you got to make the big pass in this league to win. It's not about the big rushing team. Okay. Uh, fourth, Dallas. They could fall out. If they lose to Philadelphia, they're, they'll fall out of the top five. And then fifth to the 49ers in that defense of 49ers. Uh, other teams you could put in fifth. Um, I couldn't put the Giants there, even though they've only got one loss. Okay. Uh, I could not put a team like Baltimore there. They've got two losses there, and they could have had three. Okay. Could not do that. Uh, Miami's falling apart, guys. I mean, they, they've got two losses, and uh, they've got two quarterbacks out. And we don't know when they're going to get them back. They're both in concussion protocol. You know, the the fact that they went so quickly like that, there was an episode of Seinfeld where uh, George Seinfeld, Jerry Seinfeld, excuse me, got George as his uh, friend there. Jerry Seinfeld goes down to Florida and these old men trying to prove themselves, these cocky, I actually used to work with guys like that. They were about, they were in their late 60s, 70s, uh, 80s, and, and they were always trying to show up the young guys and brag about this and brag about that. And uh, one guy says he was at a, he was in a retirement community down in Florida. Jerry goes down there and the guy just picks up a, uh, tries to pick up. He's like, you think you're better than me? And they try to pick up something. And the guy uh, hurts his back. And they say, some other guy said, call an ambulance. And then the guy's son says, uh, you think you're better than me? You think you're better than dad? You think you're better than me? Then he tries to pick up a TV. Then he hurts his back. And then both of their dad, who's like 95 years old, over 100, he says the same thing. They're all three up in bed. I thought that was funny. But it... It's just one of those things that kind of remind me of that particular very funny show, Seinfeld. They're showing the replays there on uh there on the on Netflix there. Funny stuff. Okay. Uh so at the end of the game, Devontae Adams, who is making about uh 25 million a year average, gets this huge deal. He's traded to the Raiders. And I said, yeah, that is to sell tickets, okay? That That is a team who has problems um, stopping people consistently on defense. They've always been, uh, de- even since John Gruden, before John Gruden, Lloyd, Lloyd Bridges, old man syndrome. Yeah. Yeah, Miami's in. We're, so the whole point was Miami was kind of like, you know, you put him on, hey, I can quarterback this team, and then uh, this guy gets hurt to a, and then Teddy Bridgewater, no, I can quarterback, and they're both out with and with the concussions. And I'm surprised their third string guy is not Sam Bradford, right? Just kidding. Anywho, okay. So 
Devontae Adams, a guy who was traded for, what is it, first and second round? I can't remember. I, I just remember thinking Green Bay had such a, this is such a good move for Green Bay. And nobody else liked it. Everybody else is still buying into this receiver makes the quarterback and uh, the quarterbacks need really good receivers and yada, 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 and all that noise. And the truth of the matter is it's mostly about the quarterback. It's good to have receivers that are have chemistry and develop some time with the quarterback. I, I get that. I've come to the realization of, of saying that. Uh, we, we've seen the, the, tr the struggles that the Packers are having. Uh, I'm out of Nashville. We saw the troubles that the Tennessee Titans have had without a big play guy like a um, like an AJ Brown per se. Uh, so, so th there is some truth to that. But overall, they had Hunter uh, Renthro. They had Zay Jones, which is a pty decent guy. They had a All Pro tight end level, Darren Waller. They could have drafted another guy. Yes, they lost Henry Ruggs to uh, a tragedy. Okay. But they could have made some moves. They could have made some other moves rather than trading for a moonshot for a 31-year-old uh, superstar top-notch receiver. And they've got one win to show for it. Now they're one and four. Go figure. All right. But so they give up this big lead because they can't have a defense that – that can control uh, this Kansas City offense. And Devontae Adams gets mad and pushes down a cameraman for no reason when he leaves the stadium. He just shoves a cameraman down, and the guy, uh, there's reports now, he has filed a police report. And he should. But that's how entitled that these players can be. You know, and it reminded me, Pickles, so much of Dennis Rodman in 1997, in the uh, regular season Minnesota Timberwolves game, I watched the game live. I watched the game live because the Bulls were the team to watch then. And uh, Kevin Garnett was starting to really live up to his hype. You know, he's a second-year guy, very young guy, out of high school, playing really well. Uh, Dennis Rodman gets beat to the rim. I want to say he fouled a guy. He falls down on the ground, and he sees this cameraman yeah, filming him, doing his job, and he kicks the guy in the growing area. Now, he was uh, – so the, he uh, sued the guy. The guy filed a lawsuit getting $200,000, and with league fines, that kick cost him uh, – this is the 97, folks. That kick cost Dennis Rodman $1.1 million. You know, so this guy's already filed a report. He's going to sue Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams has tweeted out an apology and all this stuff, but he's going to be out probably $250,000. In, in the lawsuit alone, he'll probably get suspended uh, for a game. Uh, he makes about uh, one point seven million a game, one point five million a game. There's seventeen games you get paid after each game, uh, close to twenty twenty plus million a year. So he uh, and, and uh, Pickle says, yeah, he should have been sued. And of course, he did get sued. He did. That guy sued him, and he got two hundred thousand dollars out of that. So would you let a person kick you in the groin for two hundred thousand dollars? Pending how bad uh, you wanted the $200,000 and pending on your tolerance of pain. I don't know. Dennis Rodman's a pretty strong guy. I don't know if I would do that or not. I don't know if I would do something crazy like that. Uh, the show, uh, what's it called, with Johnny Knoxville called Jackass? He would probably do it. But, you know, these guys, they just they have this sense of the world revolves around me. Uh, everybody, this is my work. And that, that, because we put these athletes on these pedestals, that's why you've got a lot of these guys wanting to lecture people off of stuff that they're not even experts in, politics and uh, 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 criminal justice. And that's why you got a guy like Jason Whitlock just telling the truth about it, you know? 
he, you know, Adams, but hey, he's he's not really been known as a guy to have a bad, this is probably, this is an isolated incident. He doesn't have a history per se of this sort of thing, Devontae Adams, but uh, it, it was a bad moment and it made the NFL look bad. I'm sure they're going to suspend him at least a game for this. That that's that's my um, that that is my uh, my guess, folks. And he should be. It looks bad. I was talking to Rob earlier today about that. He said, "Yeah, they they should suspend him." You know, he he agreed, and he thought about the Dennis Rodman thing too. Okay, college football notes. You know, I I never thought that I would say this. What I'm gonna say, but Tennessee. Uh, I remember last year, uh, last, what was it, March or something? Uh, Probably before that, because I think they fired their coach around December 2020, whatever. Either way, I I thought this Josh Heupel guy was was a joke. Uh, he, he, He went to Central Florida, and Central Florida, he came from Central Florida, and I want to go over this this guy's resume here was was not very good. You know, he was okay, check this out. This is Josh Heupel. He was 12 and 1, very good in 2018 when he took over for Scott Frost at UCL. Then his record in 2019 was 6 and 3. Then his record was 6 and 4. Tied for third in the American Athletic Conference. So he got progressively got worse each year he took on that UCF team. And the general manager, I think his name was like Danny White or something. I don't think it was the same guy that used to play for the Cowboys. It was just coincidence. But the AD up there uh, uh was hired for the AD for Tennessee, and then he just hired this guy. So I was telling people, boycott the program. They're not really interested in winning, yada, yada, yada. Now, second, now, now, this team is, they they beat LSU, who was 25th, by the way. That's their third top 25 win of the season, and they've only played, what, five games? and three have been ranked opponents, and they've won all three. They beat LSU at LSU 40-13. to They're first in yards nationally offensively. They're second in points only to Ohio State. Hendon Hooker's odds to win the Heisman are now up to third, okay? He is third in Heisman voting, and that is behind... Let me make sure. I thought I put this down here. Uh... Second only to, let's see. Oh, well, maybe I didn't get that. Okay, yeah. Uh, Caleb Williams, who hasn't played anybody, and C.J. Stroud, who has one really good win. Michigan State is bad this year. They're not good this year. That's another argument for another day. Mel Tucker does great his first year. Has some big wins. Comeback win, I want to say, against Michigan. And I think maybe he was a guy that come in kind of like a one-year wonder kind of guy, kind of like a Charlie Weiss. This team's bad this year. They saw they until they blew with him out. Okay. But Stroud is number one. Caleb Williams, uh, he's the guy with USC. He's number two. Hendon Hooker's number three. Now I'll say this. He beats Alabama Saturday. He's gonna go up to number one. And he has a air quote, Desmond Howard. Uh, Heisman moment there. Okay, if he has that Heisman moment, then 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 maybe he he goes up to first there. Uh, so, and 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 here's another thing about Tennessee: they're eleventh in run defense. Now, we'll I'll break down this game Friday with uh, Mad New Yorker. We'll we'll talk about the predictions of Sunday of Saturday's game, but. Uh, so it's a massive turnaround, you know. And they're still only six, considering when they play three wins against top Ohio State. Uh, so Ohio State beat Notre Dame, who lost to 
uh, uh, Marshall. That's their only really big win there because Notre Dame was fifth and they were way, way overrated. Uh, they beat Wisconsin, a team who fired their coach. So it, it's just Oklahoma State doesn't really have that great a resume. Again, we'll find out next week. We'll find out Saturday, excuse me, after Saturday at 2.30 Central time. Then after that game's over with, we'll, we'll see where this team ranks. But uh, they are the most interesting team, the most surprising team that could be in the hunt. Uh, for a national championship, a playoff uh, in the league this year. Uh, I did not think I would be saying that. I'm not saying that because I'm out of Nashville. I'm just telling you the truth that Tennessee uh, is playing um, probably the best offense I've seen them play since watching that team. Now, they're not, they're on pace to score like 450 to 500 points this season uh, for the record. The best team of all time was three years ago, and that was LSU in college football. 2019, they scored, uh, I want to say, 760. Uh, Joe Burrow set a passing record with 60 passing touchdowns, third most passing, and they had 700 and something points, I want to say. Here it is, 726 points. Scored, which is set a FBS record. They average nine point uh, seven seven point nine yards a play. They're close to that team. They're close, you know. And Pickle says he the guy don't turn the ball over. Uh, that rush defense is what. If you're an Alabama fan, that should be concerning for you. The rush defense. So they're the biggest surprise team. Right now, up to this point, now we'll see how they play against Alabama. Maybe they get blown out. But I, it may very well be, it looks like the best offense I've seen, in, better than Peyton Manning, T. Martin, those 90s teams. Uh, those teams really, really lean on the running game. Uh, those teams had a lot of garbage points. This team starts fast. They're efficient. Uh, the players look wide open. They're schemed. They're so fast in and out of plays that uh, uh, I see Hendon Hooker looking when he has his first option uh, covered. He goes to three or four reads, so his fourth read sometimes. But they do the play so fast, it looks like he has all kinds of time to throw because normally he's getting rid of the ball in like 1.5 seconds or some ridiculous amount of time like that, the cameraman can't even keep up with them sometimes. The, the guys are looking at something on the sideline, the cameraman, and the commentators are talking about something, and Tennessee has already made another play, and, and uh, the defense isn't fully lined up. So they're faster than some of these Big 12 teams. Uh, that uh, Now, he came from – he played at Oklahoma. He won a – uh, a 2000 national championship as a quarterback with Oklahoma, Josh Heupel, you know? So uh, they're an interesting team, you know? Okay. So part two of my college notes. So TCU beat Oklahoma uh, and Kansas, who was ranked back to back really big test against Oklahoma state for rank three. Uh, this guy's, doing really well there. I want to say his name is was it Dawson Knox? Is that the quarter uh the, the new head coach there for TCU? TCU's playing great. I mean they are really playing really good football. And another observation Oklahoma Oklahoma it looks more and more I, like I made that prediction. I said I thought uh they Texas would beat them and beat them big. It looks like that their head coach there, I want to say his name is Brent Venables. Yeah, that's who that is. Uh, he already looks like he's over his head. Brent Venables for Clemson. Uh, the former Clemson defensive coordinator, Oklahoma, looks over his head. But TCU did not see them coming. Uh, but we'll see. That That is a big game. On TCU plays Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State's playing better defense because they hired former Vanderbilt coach to be their defensive coordinator, Derek Mason, who is making 
teams making uh, uh, open field tackles like nobody's business. Remember, he was a coordinator for Stanford when they were holding back those really good Oregon teams. That's going to be a, a, a game to watch. But TCU did not see them coming. Okay, Lance Leopold. This is the best coaching job of the year. This guy may be, may be the hottest coach out there other than maybe the this Clark guy at, uh, I can't remember his first name, but the head coach of Appalachian State who beat a and and they should have beat North Carolina. That coach, between this guy right here, Lance Leopold, for a very close game of TCU, they end up losing that one at the end. Uh, they beat Iowa State, West Virginia, and Houston. And they very well may beat Oklahoma next week. They've lost their uh, leading, their starting quarterback, and the, and the backup one looks better than this. A reason why I say that about uh, Kansas is the team before he got there, he's got like four, four wins. If he's four and one, they wouldn't win two games the whole season before this guy was there. This is some of the coaches they've had over the years. Uh, guys, Les Miles couldn't win there. You know, he was 3-18, and 18, 21 games. Um, who else did they have? They fired – Charlie Weiss was 5-22 and 22 there. Turner Gill, another good Buffalo coach. This guy come from Buffalo, very successful Buffalo. And he was a Division three coach this Leopold, but guys like Turner Gill, Charlie Weiss, uh, Les Miles, uh, David Beatty, 6-42. and 42. These are the last few coaches since 2010. Clint Bowen, 1-7. and seven. I mean, just dump good coaches. Les Miles won a national championship. I know he had his issues off the field, but that it's the most amazing turnaround to be that bad and to have such other great coaches around the SEC and the ACC part of the country. Talent is so spread out to do that in two years. Lance Leopold. So keep that name in mind for this Kansas coach, Lance Leopold. He's won three division cha- division three championship at Wisconsin Whitewater, and that's a question for a guy like Al Borges. Will other schools take chances on division three coaches? Will they take chances on uh, maybe a high school coach that's dominant high school coach? Now, I want to say the previous coach, not this clown, but the previous coach at Auburn who almost had them playing for a national championship, just they were hair away. Uh, He was a dominant high school coach at one time. And and this guy was coached really well at Auburn. I think he coached for Arkansas State. So I just wonder if if something like that is going to happen here in the future because this guy is something else. And he also uh, went in record at uh, very successful at Buffalo. But Turner Gill was also successful at Buffalo. Uh, and he, he couldn't get it done at Kansas. So when, when you see a coach like that, and, and like I said, they could very well uh, – Oklahoma's lost all faith already. I mean, to get beat like that by Texas – Man, they are just woefully outcoached. They very well may beat Oklahoma, Kansas, may beat Oklahoma. But when you make that kind of current around, and then Pickle says Kansas State, yeah. So they've really hit the lottery in the Big 12 with good coaches. And that tells you how coaching, how why they get paid the big money in the college game. Not so much in basketball. It's needed in basketball to win championships. Uh, 
and, and definitely a little bit less, even less than basketball in baseball. Managers, it's even less. It's more about the pitching and all that because mainly it's analytics for baseball managers. You've got uh, general managers upstairs calling stuff, you know, uh, saying when to take this guy out a certain amount of pitches and all that stuff. So they're micromanaging. So that's why coaching is everything in college. But it looks like they found their guy. Now, these bigger programs, Wisconsin, uh, Nebraska, he's already been mentioned for Nebraska job. They're going to try to come at this guy. Hopefully Kansas can scrape up enough money from their basketball program to keep this guy around, kind of like Kentucky kept Mark Stoops around. That's a basketball school as well. So tomorrow, folks, we'll have on Al Borges, okay? Al Borges will be on the program tomorrow uh, around 7.15. I'll give you my opinion on whatever's in the news, and then I'll bring in former Auburn offensive coordinator Al Borges. I'll get into his book. I'll ask him about his journey. And I'll ask him about some of these coaches and and and, and quarterbacks and, and the league and the game and whatnot. So uh, we'll we'll see. Um, and he's a funny guy, really good storyteller. Make sure and tune in. Uh, the Night of the Tiger uh, is out. We'll talk about that. Not Eye of the Tiger, not the song. The Night of the Tiger, the Auburn Tigers. Great title. Great pictures of the book. Um, I'll probably have the book up here and I'll be showing it to you while I'm talking to Al tomorrow, 7 p.m. Uh, 15 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure and check out the show. Uh, I will see you on tomorrow at 7 p.m. Uh, Central time, not Eastern time. I say Eastern. Uh, uh, and Pickle says, yeah, uh, Cadillac Williams, Ronnie Brown, Jason Campbell. Uh, they've had guys on their secondary make the NFL. Uh, Ronnie Brown, they were so good that Ronnie Brown was the number two overall pick for the Miami Dolphins that very next year. So, uh, really good interview coming up tomorrow. Have a good one, everybody. I will see you same time, same place here on Sports Scope.